Hi everyone, it's me, Kevin. First of all, I really wish to thank each and every one of you for being with us, the great SpaceX team. If it weren't for you all, I wouldn't be where I am today, with a group of professional colleagues who are like a second family to me. I try my hardest every day along with everyone on the team to make sure you are presented with the most up-to-date information at the best of quality that we should all strive for. Unfortunately, today is just one of those days that I can't pull my weight. So for that, I'm terribly sorry for the audio quality that you're going to have to hear. But nevertheless, I am truly thankful for you being there for us, the team, and especially for me from day one. You're a real hero. So from all of us at Great SpaceX, most of all from me, we thank you and hope you can enjoy the content we have for you today. With each passing day, SpaceX continuously pushes the boundaries of space exploration in terms of rocket technology. That said, immediately after the launch that the company called a success last week, the SpaceX team began working on repairing the damage left behind in the wake of the historic milestone that is Starship's first orbital flight test, while analyzing lessons learned in the hopes of implementing them for future development. Indeed, Starbase never sleeps. Notably, there was a big fire at Massey's test range. The fire raged for almost an hour and is considered an accident. By the time of this report, there is still no confirmation of the exact cause of the fire. However, there was an SPMT between S-25 and the nose cone jail in this area, so it could involve the SPMT battery fire. We're just hoping that no one was harmed as a result of this event. But back to other activities at Starbase, many cranes are supporting the crew working on the orbital launch mount. This structure just got a second staircase. The bottom of the first one is damaged. This means the stage zero structure should be good, otherwise they wouldn't add another staircase. Meanwhile, by using a crew lift, other additional inspections of the hole in the LOX tank, or liquid oxygen tank, can be conducted. The repeated inspections may indicate that repair could be a viable option instead of requiring a full replacement. Ideally, the damage is limited to the outer cover and has not affected the internal storage. In reality, SpaceX believes it can repair damage to the launch pad used used for its first Starship flight and will be ready to fly again with a second rocket by early summer, the leader of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration said. It blew a hole in that launch pad, Bill Nelson, the agency's administrator, told lawmakers at a House Science Committee during a hearing on Thursday, referring to SpaceX's inaugural Starship flight on the 20th of April. However, this failure is not a big downer for the company. This is really kind of the sort of first step in a very long journey that will require many, many flights, Musk said. For those that have followed the history of Falcon 9, a Falcon 1 actually, in our attempts at reusability, I think it might have been close to 20 attempts before we actually recovered a stage. And then it took many more flights before we had reusability that was meaningful, where we didn't have to rebuild the whole rocket. Speaking of Falcon 9 achievements, SpaceX successfully launched Falcon 9 for the 25th time so far in 2023 with its latest deployment of Starlink satellites yesterday morning. It's always foggy here in Vandenberg. But if it weren't for the roar of the engines, no one would have known SpaceX had just launched thanks to the thick layer of fog over the launch pad. After a two-day delay, the Starlink 3-5 mission has brought 46 version 1.5 satellites into orbit after launching from Vandenberg Space Force Base. Launching at 6.40 a.m. PT, the Falcon 9 ignited its engines and began its journey to orbit. Following an approximate 2 minute and 27 second burn of the 9 Merlin 1D engines, the first and second stages separated, and B-1061 headed down for a successful landing on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, landing just under 6 minutes later. With this launch, B-1061 has now launched and landed a total of 13 times, including the Crew-1 and two launches for NASA. What's even more special here is that when B-1061 landed, something caught fire it appears to have come from just about the landing legs. Otherwise, the vehicle appears stable. This should be engine purge after shutdown, which found a source of ignition. They use helium to push out all the residual fuel and oxygen, a larger than normal kerosene burp. In any case, this launch marks 220 missions for the Falcon 9 and the 25th mission for the rocket so far this year. 
Even with a slight slowdown this month compared to the first three months of the year, SpaceX is on pace to far exceed their record-setting 2022 launch cadence. Next up for SpaceX is the Falcon Heavy Viasat 3 mission, currently scheduled to launch on Friday, April 28th, with a 57-minute launch window. Friday's planned launch has been delayed several times by bad weather. Weather officials issued tornado warnings on Florida's space coast. The Falcon Heavy consists of three strapped-together first stages of SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket. The central booster is topped with an upper stage and the payloads. Falcon Heavy debuted in February of 2018 with a memorable test flight that sent SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk's red Tesla Roadster into orbit around the sun with Starman, a spacesuit-clad mannequin at the wheel. The Burley rocket has flown four more times since then, most recently in January of this year, when it launched the classified USS F-67 mission for the US Space Force. The Falcon Heavy's three first-stage boosters are designed to be reusable, however, none of the boosters will be recovered on today's mission, presumably because they won't have enough fuel left over to maneuver themselves safely back to Earth for a vertical touchdown. For more than five years, the Falcon Heavy was SpaceX's most powerful rocket, but the company's gigantic Starship vehicle took that title with its debut liftoff on April 20th, a test flight that reached a maximum altitude of 24 miles, or 39 kilometers, and ended in a commanded explosion high above the Gulf of Mexico for safety's sake. Starship's 33 first-stage Raptor engines generated 16.7 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, according to SpaceX. That's more than three times more than the Falcon Heavy produces, and nearly twice as much as the second-place vehicle, NASA's Space Launch System Mega Rocket. In our last bit of news, the Russian government has agreed to continue participation in the International Space Station until at least 2028 the last partner to agree to an extension of the station's operations. NASA said on April 27th that Russia had confirmed it will support the station through 2028. The other partners, NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, European Space Agency, and Japan's Aerospace Exploration Agency, had previously agreed to keep the station going beyond 2024 to 2030. Roscosmos announced on April 25th that Yuri Barasov, head of the agency, had sent letters to the leaders of the other space agencies involved with the ISS, informing them that the Russian government had agreed to an extension. The ISS program is the largest and most successful international project in the field of space, and I am glad that such a unique laboratory will continue its work and will contribute to the realization of the most daring ideas of mankind in space exploration," he said in translated remarks published by Roscosmos on social media. Russia's future on the station had been uncertain as Roscosmos discussed plans to develop its own national space station in the latter half of the 2020s. Borisov, shortly after being named head of Roscosmos in July of 2022, said that Russia would leave the partnership after 2024, which many interpreted to mean immediately after 2024. Borisov soon softened those remarks, saying that Russia would leave sometime after 2024. Though he was skeptical that Russia would be involved through 2030, the date set by NASA and accepted by other partners, citing a lack of research it needed to perform on the station and the health of some of the station's aging modules. NASA's administrator Bill Nelson did not mention the Russian statement in testimony after the House Science Committee on April 27th about the agency's fiscal year of 2024 budget request, but did emphasize, as he has repeatedly done since Russia's February 2022 invasion of Ukraine, that a good working relationship continues with Roscosmos. The cooperation, he said, requires an extension of a long-standing waiver to sanctions imposed by Iran, North Korea, and Syria Non-Proliferation Act so that NASA can provide funding to Russia. That waiver was initially linked to payments for Soyuz seats NASA purchased from Roscosmos, but today, seats between the agencies are bartered with commercial crew vehicles now in operation. And that's about it for today's episode. We thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you soon.